All right, Ben Bang, today is Tuesday. It is October 11th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Uh, it's Eddie and Chief. Chief, how are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm back in the chair. We were, in, we were in the wrong studio, I feel like, the last couple times we were doing this show. Maybe one time. It feels good to be back. Like This is home base. It's great to be back. It's great to... Uh, you we're going to get weird today. That's what, I, that's what it sounds yeah. like. That's yeah. what it sounds like. Um, but you know it's not weird. What's that? And it, it should be normalized. Your Miller beer, Lite. Your beer of choice being Miller Lite. Yeah, that is, that is the best. And, I, you know, I saw some great ad campaigns by them over the weekend during the Bears game where, you know, this is great tasting, less filling Miller Lite. And there are other beers that were like, you know, we're, we're the healthy beer. Well, Miller Lite has one more calorie, but all the taste. Yeah. So it is a staple for any Sunday. I had a couple yesterday watching the Bears. It's the best. The official beer of the Bears, official beer of us here at Barcelona, Chicago. Love Miller Lite. It's the best, and uh, the best part about it, Chief, is it's a light beer, but it's not light on taste mm-hmm. uh, because people want their beer to taste like beer. So and this more, does. Yeah, exactly. It's yep. more of the taste you love, which is 96 calories, 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. So uh, to get it delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash Redline, or you could find it pretty much anywhere they sell beer. Yeah, I just discovered a nice little feature uh, in my back deck, the new place. So there, I had these like uh, planters, like the you know you put them on your railing. Yeah. And there's one that's right underneath the window where my AC unit is in my kitchen. So when I take the AC unit out, uh, that planter is just going to be the permanent fixture spot for my outdoor beers this winter. So that's I'm just going to open the window, reach out into like an outside fridge, basically pull one in, close the window. It's, I can't wait. Like, I literally can't wait. That's beautiful. Yep. So. Celebrate responsibly, Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96, cal- 96 calories, excuse me, and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. All right, Chief, we're getting weird. Getting weird, but also scientific, okay? And uh, this is about, I was shocked. when I've been sitting on this for a couple of weeks, and I'm going to make a companion uh, TikTok video about this, I think. But th- there is strong evidence that there were nuclear explosions, like, gigantic nuclear explosions on Mars um, before anybody knew what was going on, like before we even knew Mars existed, before humans existed. But there was like, there's real like evidence and it only points in one direction, which is a nuclear war on Mars. That's crazy. Crazy, because we think of Mars as the red planet, desolate, that Matt Damon movie where he's just like, I'll try to grow potatoes in my own shit and see if I can live here for a while until a rescue mission comes. And, you know, and Mars has been in the news, Elon Musk, and we'll talk about him a little bit later too, but it's just, we know it as the red planet where nothing's going on. And, um, it also, I don't know. I have skepticism about what out of the gate because it doesn't like, isn't everything different there? How so? Like just, you know, the, the atmosphere, like everything well, is different. That's part of the, that's part of the thing is that they don't have an atmosphere. Yeah. So it's like, but, if you look at the surface of the planet, uh, and you know, and we've sent, you know, we sent the Curiosity rover there in 2012, and we'll talk about that too. But there's all sorts of geology very similar to Earth. That there's plenty of speculation and evidence to suggest that they used to have oceans and lakes and rivers and all these other things that would go along with a planet uh, that had the crucial elements to sustain life. That they they definitely at one point had those and the question has always been, well, what happened to it? Like what happened to it? Because it's been like this as long as we've been able to look at Mars, it's always been, you know, it's, it's been the red planet forever. So before we had, you know, cause it is visible with the naked eye sometimes. Yeah. And so we're talking like ancient Greeks and prehistoric peoples would, would call it like it was, it was the, I think that was like the, um, I think it was Apollo was the, the God of war was like the Mars planet. Uh, so this is something that they always, it like, as long as humans have been looking at Mars, it's been red and lifeless. And, uh, and this, but it feels like because it's close enough to us and it's a similar size to us. Uh, so it's not like Jupiter where it's like, well, nothing could ever really even grow there because the gravity is so crazy and it's so mm-hmm. far away and it's cold. There is plenty of evidence to suggest that Mars has some baseline things about it to be able to sustain life. But you're right. The atmosphere is completely different there and it's completely different because it is non-existent. So, and you could, in other planets while they, you know, like Jupiter, for example, 
they have an atmosphere that is fucking wild. They got that crazy storm that's like bigger than the whole of Earth. It's just like that eye that's, if you look mm-hmm. at a picture of Jupiter, it's like a hurricane blowing like 4,000 mile per hour winds. And it's just, it never goes, it kind of moves, but never really goes away. So like they have an atmosphere. It's just toxic and un, like the most, un, like the worst place imaginable. It's like the yeah. worst place imaginable. Like you wouldn't be able to stand up. Like you would get squashed by the gravity and it has all these different things where Mars just has like basically no atmosphere to speak of whatsoever. And when you don't have an atmosphere, you can't have any life because like if you, like one of the reasons why like our, um, when we send astronauts into space, one of the reasons why they're like so super covered up in those like crazy suits is because as soon as you leave our atmosphere, like the SPF 45 isn't gonna do dick, okay? like those rays, even if you can't necessarily see them, if you're outside our atmosphere, you're cooking. Like you're going to get completely torched, cancer, dead, like instantly from those, those sun rays because they're so powerful, but we don't feel it necessarily. We only feel like the fraction of it that actually penetrates our atmosphere because we have like an ozone layer and we have all these other things that reflect um, the vast majority of this, of the sun they're like these solar flares and, and fusion that comes blasting out of the sun, like the sun. And this is like beyond my domain of competence and my, <laughs> my knowledge, but the sun is basically like a nuclear reactor. Like it's a constant giant nuclear reactor that's sending out energy indefinitely, you know, like perpetually all through like nuclear fission. And it like retracts some of it because its own gravity will suck some out, but the stuff that it, uh, the coronal mass ejections that it shoots out in the atmosphere and shoots out into the solar system, like that's what pe- comes to earth and like helps heat our planet and everything like that is it's, it's basically a giant nuclear ball. Mm-hmm. And that's like, I, it's something that I can't really speak to beyond that. Cause I'm not like a nuclear physicist, but that is ex- essentially it's a nuclear reaction happening all the time uh, on a, on a massive level, but it's just far enough away that it doesn't cook us. And we have this atmosphere to protect us from that intense, intense radiation where Mars doesn't because the atmosphere is gone. And so we can just kind of get into. Yeah, top in. So when the Curiosity rover went to Mars, it was August 2012, they took all these like kind of soil samples and different readings. And what they're noticing was this element called Xenon-129, which is a, a decay, I think that's like a version of, of Xenon. Xenon, if you look at a periodic table, I think it's 54, if I remember. And... Um, so this is Xenon-129, and we're familiar with Xenon-129 on Earth because the only places you really, the only places you find it, the only thing capable of creating that version, that spectrum of that of that Xenon, is a nuclear explosion. So they find it all over the place in Hiroshima. They find it in uh, Nagasaki. They find it all these places where they have done nuclear testing before. You have these heavy levels of um, of this xenon 129 it's a byproduct of a nuclear explosion and that is all over the surface of mars at, and at levels two and a half times the highest ever recorded on earth now was this at chernobyl too yeah uh that, see like that's a meltdown i'd have to look into that i would okay. i would assume uh the readings that i did didn't mention chernobyl they mentioned nagasaki they mentioned hiroshima they mentioned all these different nuclear test sites you know, they've been testing nuclear bombs for 70 years or whatever now. Mm-hmm. So they mentioned all of those. They did not mention Chernobyl specifically, um, but they, that might have, it, it might be there as well. But that was, that is like this Xenon 129 is associated with the explosions. And okay. I think meltdowns might be a little different. Gotcha. Okay. Because so. that's what my brain first went to, but. <laughs> to the HBO show? Well, that and just like, hey, it could be this, not yeah. a war. <laughs> Well, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. And that was like, scientists have been looking for other explanations, too. And there's like this area. There's a country in Africa called Gabon, which is like. If I'm thinking of my World Cup qualifier regions, like <laughs> the right way, I'm pretty sure Gabon is like a little sliver of a country near like Ghana. Uh, let me look at Togo, places like that. Um, and they have this like weird feature, like geological feature where they have kind of like a small time. Uh, nuclear reaction like happening in nature which it doesn't really happen anywhere else to my knowledge except for there and it like looks weird uh let me see if i can put if i'm thinking of the right country yeah gabon is 
just south of Cameroon. So Gabon. if it goes like Nigeria, Cameroon, uh, Gabon, and that's like right on like right in the um, the Congo area, and they have that one that one feature. Uh, come on, nuclear reactor. <laughs> um, and if you look at it, they have like these weird just features in rock. We're like, this is what the fuck is this? And uh, but that but it comes out it so it can theoretically occur in nature. But if you talk to like weapons experts and uh, nuclear physicists who like and these are people who are not like crackpots are people who like work for NASA. And um, although I guess our guy a couple of weeks ago was a crackpot who like founded NASA. So, so perhaps that was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Jack Parsons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but they're saying like the, the spectrum of the Xenon 129 is, is much different. And it's so light that there's just, or it's so light in that place in Gabon. And it's so intense on Mars that they, that they're like, we, they, there might be another explanation besides nuclear war but they haven't been able to come up with one more plausible than that. So, and they're saying that the, the radiation sites, there's no crater, okay? So which means that like this explosion happened that caused all this radiation, this intense levels of Xenon 129 happened like above the surface. And that's actually something that happened in Nagasaki and Hiroshima too. It didn't detonate like on the ground detonated in the air and it just had this massive energy explosion out in every direction uh which you know if you the, the scenes of where like the aftermath of those where those bombs got exploded it's like oh my god but there's no crater so it would be a similar thing here where it's like the two places where it's in the northern hemisphere of mars that have the most intense radiation are there's no like there's no crater to be found uh, but the the radiation is so intense there and this and the presence of this xenon 129 is so intense there that they do the math and they're like the bomb that would have exploded there would have been, had to have been the size of the empire state building holy shit so it would be like like what the fuck like yeah. just take out everything and um and it's that is like a big a big fucking problem so if you have a bomb that big and it goes off kind of in the atmosphere. Well, not only will it destroy all like the life, like we've seen at these other bomb sites um, and testing sites. And I think everybody associates like that mushroom cloud. And then I feel like there's that exploding house from the test site that everybody, I feel like that's when you think of like visions of nuclear war, they show like this thing. I think it was in New Mexico. They set off a bomb and then you don't really see anything. And then you just see this house just go, <laughs> and just like get just completely destroyed. And, but if you did that um, above the surface, it's also going to incinerate the atmosphere. So like any oxygen pff, lit up, any ozone layer pff, lit up, um, you know, nitrogen, all these elements that are like, you know, they, they say we carbon, all the things that we breathe in, which I say, they, they say the earth, earth's air that we breathe in is like 70% nitrogen for whatever that's worth. And this bomb or this war or whatever it caused it would have just whoosh, like the entire atmosphere would have knocked it out. So there there have been theories that um previously and other there's still a theory that it's everyone's like Mars definitely had an atmosphere at one point. What happened to it? And one of the things that has been theorized is that it was a giant um you know, a coronal mass ejection with these solar flares. Like when we see like, um, like Aurora Borealis where like the Northern lights where it like shimmers all green and, and blue and stuff in the night sky and like Alaska and Norway and stuff that that is just a solar flare hitting the atmosphere and skipping off into space. But it just leaves that color as it like kind of enters our atmosphere and burns up a little bit. And they're saying that this one could have been ejected from the sun at such a rate and like such a huge one and Mars was like wrong place, wrong time, that it just blew off and burned up their atmosphere in a second like that. So that is a theory, but it's still, even that would not explain the Xenon 129, which is associated with the nuclear explosions. And it could be something else, but that's, that is what scientists are like, well, this is the only thing we know causes that Xenon 129 to be like present. So if it's something else, we haven't discovered it yet. 
And these are guys who just sit around all day thinking about this shit. Yeah. So kind of, uh, kind of interesting, but it's like that would, you know, kind of explain what happened on Mars. It's like either somebody else and fucking nuked them. Some other alien came through and nuked them, or it was like, you know, they had very advanced nuclear weapons and warring countries like United States and USSR. They had the Cuban Missile Crisis. And instead of Kennedy, like, cutting the deal and making peace, they they it's like an alternate universe where the button got pressed. And it started a all-out worldwide nuclear war that when one of the bombs was so big that it blew up the atmosphere and killed everybody. That's crazy. And then we, then we come around, like, this 300 million years, okay? that this apparently happened and they can measure the soils and like the isotopes decaying. Like that's beyond me, but that's what they theorize is when this event happened it was about 300 million years ago. That's about 50 million years before dinosaurs were walking on earth. So dinosaurs were here from like 245 million years ago to like 65 million years ago is when they think that that asteroid came to earth and destroyed them that's so long it's ago. it's so long that like <laughs> you can't even wrap your brain around yeah. so i had to google like what was going on on earth 300 million years ago and it's like well they had like some reptile looking things were emerging out of amphibian things and i'm like that sounds like a dinosaur they would have just said so then i was like when were dinosaurs around it's like well 50 million years after, after that. that so and if you think of the whole sp span of the human species the oldest Scientists are willing to say is like possible for like one of our people like the oldest thing that they found is 400,000 years So it's like nothing like yeah. we've, we haven't been here for a fucking second yet, man Shout out to dinosaurs man stayed relevant for a long, long time, time. King <laughs> of the, you know, yeah. On that throne for apex predator for a long fucking time and then you know We probably never emerge if there's just they would just be chomping the shit out of Fuck us. Yeah, but like yeah Are still relevant the fucking new Jurassic world came out this year because they're so like they're such a mystery. Yeah, my fucking nephew loves dinosaurs. I don't know why all kids go through a dinosaur phase. Because my nephews did too. It was like the first time where I'm like, oh, this kid's definitely gonna be smarter than me. Like he was four, and I'm like, he had like one of those books that has all the oh, different dude. types, and I'm like, uh, mm. uh, Stega, and they have like all these weird names. And I'm like struggling to pronounce. He goes, that's a you know whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was he, like, oh, okay. He played the charades game with me and it was either dinosaur or animal and he would be i'm like dude i just know t-rex and velociraptor yeah. triceratops maybe stegosaurus that's about and it he would like come up with these yeah. elaborate ones yeah like, no it's this one i was like oh right. megalodon it was yeah. a dinosaur <laughs> shark yeah, idiot exactly like, oh, oh yeah i feel fucking stupid so and then it's like so that they think that that's what happened and then you know thinking about p things that are relevant like mars is still super relevant Elon Musk has said that his goal in life is to die on Mars, which I feel like he could probably accomplish that. You could just crash a rocket into it. But he wants to <laughs> set up like a, That's per true. a permanent colony where it's self-sustaining and he can live there. And he's like his he like flippantly like made this comment that he thinks that we should nuke Mars. And like that's like part of the solution. So Mars has. Uh, and each of its poles like his he's like we have to heat up Mars mm -hmm. to make it you know to and terraform it and he was like we need to like nuke the poles to do that and he was like kind of joking kind of serious but really he wanted to have like a permanent heat source at the poles so all this carbon that is liquefied up there because again they don't really have an atmosphere so everything just kind of settles down so you have like liquefied carbon I guess and if you heat that up into a gas form, then you have carbon in your atmosphere and you can send all these other elements to it. And you could theoretically warm up Mars to the point where you can, starting with some kind of nuclear fusion or, or I guess it would be fission. Doesn't, don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let myself get tripped up on something I don't understand, but some kind of reaction <laughs> at the poles to heat up the whole planet and allow there to be gases and stuff in their atmosphere and then send like organic material too. And then because once you heat up the carbon there, it's theorized that, or, or not even theorized, I think that the next thing that will come is water. And then once you have water, you can have other things. So his theory is like, can we create some sort of accelerant that would create an atmosphere which would create water and we can either hope for organic matter to come about uh, naturally or we can send some like starter colony type things 
for organ and then like you just build rebuild earth or rebuild mars to look like earth which is what they think it looked like 300 million years ago with greenery and rivers and oceans and everything like that can you do that um by design and that's kind of what he is what he's hoping for like when he wants to go to mars he doesn't want to be like living in a bubble wearing a space suit the whole time he wants it to be like another planet Earth, yeah, yeah. And uh, so it, it, it's it's like an interesting theory because you do have to heat it up because the average temperature on Mars, the average, is negative eighty one degrees. It's not going to play. We're no, who's signing up for that? No. I, okay. So the low end is minus two twenty. Canadians, maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe minus two twenty, and then the warmest it gets, which is I guess sort of rare, but the warmest it gets is it can be as, as high as seventy degrees, which is nice. That is nice. So if you can just get us to that kind of consistent range where an atmosphere would allow things to like retain heat a little bit, he's like you know like and Musk would say like we need to like have less carbon on Earth and more carbon on. Um, on Mars, because it always kind of heats it up. That was another little fact I found um, when I was like, well, "What was going on here 300 million years ago?" It was like hot as fuck. It was like we like they're like the whole planet was like swampy jungles. It was because we had so much carbon in the atmosphere on Earth 300 million years ago, way more than we have now. Mm-hmm. So that's one of those things where it's like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, but. We'll probably figure it out and be fine. That, he just needs to get like a big fucking uh, vacuum and just, just suck shoot all the it out shoot there. Up. Yeah, I, I mean they're doing crazy shit. Like they're trying to like redirect asteroids now, and like th- there's there's theories that that's how water got to Earth in the first place. Was that an asteroid came through and it had all these, you know, um, elements essential to life, and one of them was like frozen water that was hurtling through space, and bam. bam collides with earth and then all this condensation goes in the atmosphere and that's how really everything was brought to earth like all the different elements that we know about was might have been through a series of asteroid strikes so could you do that to mars could you redirect an asteroid just like a little bit and send it on its path and after you've heated the poles and it hits and it just brings all this uh, you know matter uh, and elements to to Mars to terraform it, so you can have you know soils and things like that. Jeez, I think like reading this and thinking about this, it makes sense to me that I think we're probably going to have a colony on Mars in our lifetime. That's what I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm not going. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm Earth till I die. Yeah, fuck Mars. But it'd be cool if they could like, you know, set it up so it's like, hey, like, and then who? Maybe we started there. Maybe maybe our maybe that's how Earthlings came here. So we were originally on Mars. We're like, well, we blew the fuck out of this place. We better get out of Dodge. Landed there. Why don't we send an asteroid first, wipe out those dinosaurs. We don't want any part of them. And then we started over. You Maybe. Never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. It's crazy to think about, though, man. Yeah. The fucking. Yeah. Yeah. An episode brought to you by 3G, perhaps. <laughs> you know. But it's, uh, it's a wild. It's a wild thing that the only like they have this intense levels of this one thing that can only be caused that we know of through a nuclear explosion yeah and they just don't know enough yet though like I, yeah but so but, the it's, one, but they the, can't come up with a better solution yeah better at you know it's like it's just huh. it is what it is so it's a it's a very interesting find though yeah um all right then chief thank you mm-hmm. uh thank you everybody for listening that's it for today We'll be back tomorrow. We will see you then.